Today I'm going to give you an overview of 365 Parcelship that Western Computer has developed. So what 365 Parcelship is doing, it's solving the small parcel problem that is currently within the standard D365 functionality. With Parcelship, wholesalers and distributors facing online competition must be able to offer small parcel shipping. Within D365, it handles full load and LTL shipping effectively, but doesn't manage small parcel shipping. Customers have to solve this problem themselves, usually with a carrier-specific app or an expensive third-party system. 365 Parcel Ship solves this problem by providing a low-cost, easy-to-use solution that functions within D365. Next, I'd like to point out a few of the benefits of using 365 Parcel Ship. One benefit is it eliminates the need to use a shipping application outside of Dynamics, it saves the expense of buying and integrating a third-party shipping system, it provides a low-cost, predictable subscription fee regardless of how many parcels you ship, it automatically creates journal entries and shipping labels for each parcel, saving administrative time and eliminating potential errors, and finally, it rate shops for the fastest or least expensive shipping alternative and ensures you have the current rates, eliminating maintenance costs and added effort. So what I want to do next is go over to D365 and show you some of the setup that's associated to parcel ship. So to do that, let's take a look at the parameters, which are in transportation management and then parcel ship. Here is one of the benefits that was listed in the presentation, you can select lowest price or shortest delivery time. If you have lowest price set as your default delivery mode, it will, whenever you go to close your container, it will automatically already have that option selected. So the lowest price would already be selected. So that's a nice feature. The license tab, this is where you put in your license key. That's part of SHPO. This is you put your ID. And finally, there's a test mode if you ever need to test the integration between SHPO and D365. You would just change this to yes. And then SHPO also provides a test mode key, so you would put that here so you would be able to actually test the software. So next, to actually see it in action, let's take a sales order and process it through to the packing closed container step. So to do that, I'm going to create a new sales order. And I know the customer account number, so I'm going to type that in here. Okay, and hit tab. All right, so when I hit tab, everything defaults in. That looks good, so I'm ready to generate the sales order. So here I'm going to put in the item number that I want to include in this order. After I put in the item number, I'm going to go to the Setup tab and change Reservation to Automatic. And I'd also like to point out this new tab that's part of the application called Special Instructions. So within the Special Handling Instructions field, you can put in information, say, for example, your third-party account number for a particular carrier. You can put in that number here, and that way you'll have a record associated to this particular transaction. All right, so now that the sales order is ready to be released to the warehouse, I'm going to make sure the warehouse tab is selected, and I'm going to click Release to Warehouse. What this is basically going to do is generate work for the warehouse worker. It's going to tell them where to pick this item from and then eventually where to place the item, which would be the packing area where the packer will take the order from there. Now that this work has been created, I'm going to go to the work order and then copy the work ID. This will be used in the mobile device screen that I'm going to go to next. So in another tab, I have the menu item for the mobile device. This is basically an emulator of what you could see in a barcode device screen out on the shop floor. So I'm going to go select the outbound menu and then go to sales picking since that's what we're doing here. I'm going to paste in the work ID, click OK. So this is the pick step. It's telling the worker to go to the pack location and put in a license plate number. So I'm going to need to go back to the sales order and then look at the license plates that have already been created in the system. And I'm going to copy one of those to use within this mobile device screen. 
So when I paste that in, it's going to take that, and now it's going to say, okay, what's the target license plate? This is going to be something that I manually type in, and I'm actually going to copy that as well because we'll need that on the pack screen. And I click OK. Now the pick is complete. Now it's on to the put. So the worker now is saying, okay, I know where to put this material. So once that step is done, they'll click OK, marking the work as completed. You'll get a message saying work completed. So next, I'm going to go to the pack screen. This is going to be where the packer creates a new container and eventually closes the container. So here is the packing station screen. My worker and all the information defaults in. There's also an addition for being able to pick a shipping label printer. Remember that I copied the target license plate value and the reason being I need it for this license plate or shipment field. Whenever I put in that license plate number, the system knows, okay, this is an order that needs to be packed. So if we take a look down at the bottom, you can see there is a line for this sales order, the quantity of one for item A0001. Now that everything looks good, I'm ready to create a new container. The system will automatically generate a container ID because of the number sequence that's set up. And I'm gonna select a container type of box large. So whenever I click OK on that, you notice that container ID is now in the container ID field. And you can see additional information about the order. The gross weight is five. So what I wanna do next is in the item packing fast tab, I'm going to select the identifier. So when I select the identifier, it basically simulates the packer putting in the item into a container. So now you have the total quantity of one, and you'll notice that the gross weight went from five to eight. Now the close container button is enabled because the packing operation has been completed and we're ready to close the container. And this is where you're going to see a lot of the 365 parcel ship application functionality. Within this screen, you'll see there is an all rates button. If you need the ability to search on all of the shipping rates that are tied to your SHPO account, that's what the all rates button will get you. If you scroll down a bit, there's this section called all rates. So these are all the rates that are currently tied to my SHPO account key that is set up. So you have FedEx and then USPS. So if I'm gonna scroll over to the right to see the actual cost, I'll use this scroll bar at the bottom here. And what I'm actually gonna do is gonna go with priority mail because that's the cheapest rate. So whenever I select that and I scroll back up, you'll see priority mail rate has been selected. If we scroll down a bit, here are some of the new fields that have been added. Their best rate, fastest delivery, and charged customer. I spoke a little bit about best rate earlier. This is actually a parameter setting you can put. And if this was a parameter that was selected, whenever I hit close container, this flag would be set to yes, and the system would know to select the cheapest rate option. Same concept with fastest delivery. Only thing is the system would be looking for the option that it is the quickest. And if you want to charge your customer for the shipping cost, you can put this flag to yes, and the system will know, okay, charge a customer for this fee, not your company. And then you can see a gross weight was automatically filled in when I hit the close container button. I'm ready to close the container, so I'm gonna click okay. And this should essentially generate a packing slip posting and when I click OK, this is going to mark the sales order as delivered. And also, if you need to print out the packing slip, this can also be printed out as well. So now you'll see that this container has been closed. Let's go over to the containers form, and I'll show you the status of this particular container. So this is a container we just created. You can see the container status is now closed and the shipment status is loaded. So that's indicating it's been loaded to the truck and it's now ready to be confirmed, which would essentially mark it as shipped once the truck leaves. 
So what we went over today is the 365 parcel ship application that Western has built. And it basically gives you the ability to ship small parcels, which standard E365 doesn't allow you to do. Another really great thing about this application is it automatically integrates with Shippo and it can shop for all of the shipping rates automatically. That integration is automatically already part of the application, so there is no expensive development costs associated with building out an integration with a third-party shipping software. So the application is a very powerful tool that can be of great value to many customers.